Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Our first shop update for 2022, our first video of the year. I hope everybody had a uh, great New Year's holiday, a nice little holiday break. And uh, I wish nothing but the best of health and prosperity to everybody out there. All my followers, all the, all the supporters of the channel here. So I've got some, uh, some updates for the shop. We've got some things that's getting ready to happen this week. So I'm gonna try to keep this as short as I can and continue to updates throughout the week as they, as they happen. So first thing I want to mention is uh, touch on the, uh, the flickering issue that I was having in the previous videos. You know, I had mentioned that I was trying to figure out how to correct this. I thought I was going to have to do something with the lights here. Uh, but what I did, I started playing around with the settings on the GoPro here. And I, was in the, I went into the shutter speed and I made some adjustments on the shutter speed. And I've been doing some test videos down here, and it seems to have corrected the problem that I was having there with the, uh, you know, the dark, uh, I forget what that is, the shadowing effect with the lines going through the video. So I've got the shutter speed set to 120. I typically film in uh, 60 frames a second, so I was reading where that's typically uh, double what your, whatever your frame rate is for your shutter speed. So. Uh, that seems to be working real good, and hopefully that's gonna work out. We'll, we'll uh, continue to uh, tweak that if we need to, but I'm hoping that is correcting the issue right there. All right, so uh, next order of business is the wall. The wall needs to be painted. I talked about I was gonna come here and paint that. I actually decided to hire that out to a uh, professional painter to come in. They're supposed to be here tomorrow to get started on the wall. They're gonna be doing this wall here, and then the uh, office wall right there as well. I was gonna to try to tackle that myself, but that is a very tall wall right there. That's almost 20 foot to the top. I believe that's actually 19 foot to the top right there. So I don't exactly have the uh, equipment to properly and safely get up here and do the paint on the top side of that. So I just decided, you know what? I, I really just dislike painting. It's not something that I ever enjoy to do. I love the finish at the end, but I just don't like the, the labor of painting. So. I called around, I got a couple estimates, and uh, I got a guy that's gonna come here tomorrow. They're gonna get started on it and uh, get this wall painted. They said it should take a couple of days to uh, get it done. So once the painting is done, I will show you guys what it looks like. Hopefully it's gonna uh, be nice and pretty and bright. I decided to go with a, uh, a semi-gloss white to kind of match you know, the rest of the, you know, the insulation and everything in here, make it look bright and uh, white in here with the lights on. So that should be happening pretty soon. And like I said, we'll, uh, we'll share that with you whenever, whenever we get it done. All right, so the next thing is the uh, Gorbel Jib Crane. So my buddy Joe is gonna help me and uh, hopefully on, uh, I think it's uh, the 7th, January 7th, the Friday, he's gonna help me. We're gonna start putting this thing in here. He's got the forklift, he's got a man lift he's gonna bring around here for me to use and he'll give me a hand and we'll get the, the rest of the crane installed here. We, we've got this piece here that needs to get flipped over. It's upside down right now. And there's a bearing race in there. I need to clean the, the paint out of that. I'm sure they did that to protect it from rust. To, uh, taper roller bearing. That's actually, the roller bearing is gonna sit on the top of the column there. There's a pin that that sits on and you slide the bearing down and then you basically just set this piece right down on top, on top of it. There's a seal right here in this box that I need to install. That'll keep the dust out of it. And then we have the, the main booms over there. That's also upside down, but that will get set on the top and get bolted into uh, that piece right there. The back, this back plate right here is where it'll actually get bolted in. So it'll be sitting here and then gets bolted in right there. And then I'll work on getting the, uh, the chain hoist hung. That's another reason Joe's gonna bring his man lift here so I can use that and I can start installing all the hardware. And then once all that's done, the electrician, he's already got the wire there ready for it. The electrician will come in and uh, get it hooked up. And hopefully within, hopefully within a couple weeks, we're gonna have this crane operational and ready to go. So the next order of business is, is I'm excited to share with you that I have a new machine coming to the shop here. It's not a new machine, but it's a new to me machine. So I've mentioned in the past several times that I wanted to uh, find either a larger Monarch lathe or an American pacemaker equivalent size. 
I really fell in love with the American pacemaker styling and the way that it functions because of the one I ran for years. So I've been keeping my eyes out there for uh, one to pop up for sale. I haven't really been looking hard, but um, I wanted to get this shop finished to the point to where I can move something in here, get it hooked up and start using it. And so one of my, uh, one of my followers or my viewers, he had uh, emailed me a link to an American pacemaker that was for sale on, Ameri on um, Facebook Marketplace. So I contacted the seller and found out that it was still available because he, he had just put it on there a couple days before and he had it. Uh, Brian is his name. And uh, uh, <laughs> funny thing is that he actually knew who I was whenever I called. He says he watches some of my videos. He's, he's aware of the channel and everything. But uh, anyway, him and I talked about the lathe and uh, I decided that I'm gonna buy this machine from him. So I've already got the check in the mail and uh, hopefully um, in the next day or two, he's gonna have it and uh, I'm, I'll be the owner of this American pacemaker. It is a 20 inch by 96 inch, so it's a 20 inch swing and uh, 96 inch bed, so it's got about an eight foot bed on it. So it's the same size machine as the one that I always ran at Motion, except it's just shorter. It's, it'll have a shorter bed length there. So pretty excited about that. I, I'm working on getting it, uh, the logistics, getting it picked up and getting it brought down here. It's in uh, North Ohio is where it's at. And uh, so get it shipped down here. I've contacted my friend Fred Newman that's uh, helped me in the past. He is going to uh, go pick the lathe up and bring it down here. And tomorrow I am going to be meeting with a local rigging company. They're going to come out in the morning. They're going to look at everything, look at the shop, the parking lot and all. And uh, they're going to give me an estimate on getting it unloaded and in the shop for me. The, the lathe weighs 11,000 pounds. And I honestly just don't feel comfortable doing that by myself. You know, I could rent a 15,000 pound rated forklift, maybe something else, but it's just, it's the size of the machine it is and the weight, I really don't feel comfortable with that. So I feel more comfortable hiring a rigger to come in and properly handle this machine for me since that's what they do and they have all the equipment, they have the cranes and everything to do that. So uh, hopefully we're gonna get a deal struck with them so they can come in and help me do some rigging and uh, get the lathe unloaded and get it in here. So we're probably looking at the uh, second or third week of uh, January, whenever that happens. Uh, it's uh, not uh, this coming up week when you're seeing this, but probably the following week is when it'll get picked up and brought down here. And uh, we'll have the camera so that you guys can see some of the action of this uh, lathe getting brought in, get it unloaded and bring it in here. Really excited about that. So this is the general area that I already had planned that I had want to put this lathe is right in this area. I've got the tape measure laid down on the floor. That's how long the, the machine is supposed to be. It's about 15 and a half foot. And my hopes is that I can get it positioned right here in this general area with enough room there between that and the wall over here and all that stuff. And um, have it sitting right here. I'm aware that there's a control joint here. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of people disagreeing on putting it here because of that, but I'm not gonna let this control joint uh, dictate where I'm gonna be putting machines because I need this area here for some machines. I'm hoping that it'll fit right here and that maybe the feet will be just on the left side of this control joint and then we'll actually be standing on this side of it to do the operating. But it should fit right in this area right here. I just gotta position it so, so that the big door on the headstock when you go to open it up that, you know, the columns right here, I gotta have enough room where I open a door to get into it that it doesn't hit the column. So that's the, that's the main thing, is just trying to get it centered in there to where I need it to go. So that's, uh, that was the exciting news that I wanted to share with you guys is the lathe. As I said, I wasn't expecting to get one that soon, but this one popped up. I thought the deal was right. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't asking some astronomical price like you see out there on you know, other places for, with lathes for sale. And I think it's gonna be a good machine because I actually saw the thing run you know, he did a FaceTime with me to um, show me the controls running and the, the feeds, the speeds in the headstock, everything seems to be working just fine on this machine. And uh, I think we're gonna have, I think we're gonna have a good lathe whenever it comes in.
I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut it off from here because I want to show you guys what the painting looks like once it's done. So I'm gonna come back down here in a couple days. Hopefully, if everything goes as scheduled, we'll have this wall painted and have this wall painted right there. And I'll show you what that, what that looks like whenever we get to that point. It's a great day for painting here in Florida. We woke up this morning, it was 33 degrees at the house, but uh, it, it, don't, it don't normally get that cold down here in Florida, but we get it a few times throughout the winter. But I think everybody in the country is uh, experiencing this little cold blast that came through uh, this week right after uh, New Year's. But uh, anyway, so the uh, painting crew has been here this morning. They've been getting busy on the, uh, the painting. So I wanted to go ahead and give a little update shot. Uh, they actually just walked out. They're going to lunch, but you can see they just put they just put the first finish coat on this wall right here. So they primed it, and then the first coat they literally just finished it about 30 seconds ago and walked out. All right, and then this side right here, they've got the primer coat on this wall here. So when they get back, they're going to go ahead and start putting the first coat on this wall here. But uh, more than likely, they're going to be back in here tomorrow to put the second coat on both walls since it is, it's not, it's not super cold in here, but it is a little bit cold for the painting. It's probably in the fifties inside the shop here right now. So he was saying, depending on how, how that first coat flashes over, they're probably gonna have to wait until tomorrow. But they told me from the get go, they were gonna need two days to get the job done. So I think they're making pretty good progress on it. So it's looking pretty good. They decided, or uh, the owner, Gary, he was here this morning talking to me for a while, and he talked me into going with eggshell because of the smooth, the smoothness of the wall. You know, there wasn't any of the, what they call it, like the uh, knockdown or the, uh, the orange peel that they normally spray on there. Since it was so smooth, uh, Gary was telling me that if you, I was planning on going with semi-gloss. He says the problem with semi-gloss on a wall like this is that you're going to see any of the imperfections, especially if the, um, the drywall is not perfectly straight. You might see a little bit of curve in there where it's mounted to it. So he says the eggshell is the best choice for that, but it's the, um, it's, I'm going to have the same quality. The paint is the same. It's just the finish is a little different. I'll still have that, that, good, uh, that good quality coating that we can wash off and clean off if we get oil or, or whatever sprayed up on it. So that's it. I will, um, I will come back down here tomorrow, most likely, and just give one more update on the, uh, on the painting to see it completed out. I won't bug them anymore today and just let them uh, do their thing. So next update, we should have a completed uh, painted wall here. Okay, guys, we have a completed wall there. The uh, second coat is on. The guys left a couple hours ago and got that finished up. So it's done, looking good. So that one's finished. And of course our office wall, it's finished there as well. The only thing that, that I need to do is to go ahead and put the uh, receptacle uh, cover plates on there. Uh, obviously the guys didn't do that because it was wet paint and that needs to dry. So I will get those on here probably tomorrow or uh, next time I'm down here piddling around, we'll get that done. But it looks good. I am happy with it. I can even see some of the reflection of the, uh, of the overhead lights there on the wall. So I was a little concerned that I wasn't going to like the uh, finish of the eggshell, but I think it actually looks pretty good. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not big on paints. I don't really know a whole lot, whole lot about the different finishes, you know, but I can tell that the uh, eggshell actually put a little bit of a, you know, eggshell type of texture on the wall. And uh, I got to say the, the drywall guys did a pretty good job. I mean, that, that looks like a nice straight wall there. Everything looks pretty good. And that was one of the reasons why they suggested going with eggshell was to kind of hide any type of uh, imperfections in the finish, you know, because there wasn't any kind of knockdown finish sprayed on there afterwards there. So it looks good. I am going to be doing some kind of um, uh, baseboard along the bottom there to kind of trim that out and make it look finished. Uh, the painter Gary was suggesting getting that plastic or that rubberized stuff that you comes in a roll, I think, and you just and glue it onto the bottom. He was saying that's the cheapest way to go, but I had thought about maybe getting with Joe and having him shear me up some aluminum tread plate um, to go down there on the bottom to kind of make that finished. Also on this side over here as well, on the office side, trim the bottom with the baseboard. So I'm, I'm real happy that that is done, completed. I think the guys did a pretty good job and they got it done 
uh, pretty quick too. So I mean, really, it was it was about a 24-hour job total from uh, whenever they started, and and uh, well, a little more than 24 hours. I'm sorry, because they finished up this morning. It looks good. Definitely looks better when you're over here on this side, looking over to that side of the shop, and you're not seeing that unfinished drywall there. It looks good. They trimmed it in. Everything is trimmed in real nice. All right, so that's it for this uh, for this shop update. Next up on the list is going to be finishing off the uh, the Gorbel jib crane. Me and Joe are supposed to start on that this coming Friday. We're going to go ahead and try to get the uh, the head assembly hung, and then of course the uh, the boom on there as well. If we can get if I can get his help to get both of those two pieces up there, get it secure, then I'll uh, I'll work on the rest of the stuff by myself, getting the uh, all of the other hardware bolted to the beam, get the, the uh, trolley up there and then the, uh, the chain fall. But that'll all be a, another separate video coming up real soon. So tell me what you think about the wall. Do you like the, my choice doing the, doing the white, the eggshell finish? I think it looked pretty good. And um, we definitely need to get something up there on the wall. I, I think I would like to get a nice big American flag up there at least. And um, you know, we might have some banners and some, uh, who, who knows what, we're gonna find out and uh, we'll just kind of organically put some stuff on the wall whenever the time is right, all right? So we will see you guys on the next video.